today on the UFO Connection, we have one of the most controversial figures in the entire scene, political or UFOs, and I'm proud to say that we're talking to Mr. Bill Cooper. Bill? Hello. My pleasure, and thank you very, very much. I feel really special to have this uh, little talk with you. Um, one thing I want to ask you, and uh, um, it's been on my mind, why aren't you speaking at this particular convention? Have they, if they haven't asked you, or? No, I wasn't asked. Uh, and some conventions, I'm I'm never going to be asked because uh -huh. of the type of convention that it is. So it's a political thing, you think? No, and yeah. this one is not a political thing. I'm I know that uh, Wendell Stevens knows exactly uh, what's really going on, uh -huh. and he knows that I know what's really going on. Um, but that. Political politics has nothing to do with why I, I wasn't asked. It's because this is a special kind of convention where uh, the whole feeling is supposed to be up, feeling good, very spiritual. Uh, really? A lot of times my message is, is misconstrued as being not spiritual or being overly negative. Um, I think they miss a lot of what I say uh, because my point is, is that uh, to be a spiritual person, to be a person that really matters and to to really keep your power, which is your spirituality, and not become a slave, you have to know what the problems are, you have to identify them, you have to be mature enough and responsible enough to look them in the face and say, I've got to do something about this. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of things that I talk about, if we don't do something about it, um, it's not going to make a pile of beans whether you're spiritual or not, you're going to be somebody's slave in a future new order that's going right. to be a totalitarian socialist state. Yeah, I know I found a lot of people since I've been researching for myself uh, and we've been doing this since March uh, or excuse me April of 1989 which isn't a very long time but I found out that there are there is a definite bunch of people in this uh, in this field that do want to kind of look on the rosy side all the time and I think that's kind of Pollyanna-ish myself I think you really got to look at all sides of the pictures and there's definitely two sides to this picture. There's definitely two or more sides uh, to all of this stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, 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 we can't address it, like you just said, unless we do look at all of it, you know. That's correct. So I agree with you completely. It's human nature to want to believe in some race of benevolent space brothers that mm -hmm. come and save us from ourselves. Mm -hmm. But it's not logical, and you can't make it work any way you look at it. There may be a lot of benevolent people out there in the universe. I don't know. Uh, but one thing is for sure, any sentient being or species always has one thing first and foremost in any action that it does. And that's its own best interest and the survival of its own species. If they're looking down here watching us kill each other and war against each other and plot against each other and, and manipulate each other. Been for centuries. Why would they come down here and pick us up and take us to their planet so that we can do the same thing there? It doesn't make any sense at all. Um, I think if there is a benevolent force out there, if they're there, uh, they may be helping us uh, in other ways. They may be giving us information. They may be giving us uh, spiritual support, maybe. But the ultimate outcome of anything that happens here on this earth in our future is going to depend on us on some outside uh, group of people from anywhere. Well, let me just jump in real quick and uh, right, right in the middle of this thing is, is there anything right now before we go on that uh, that we can, because what we do is we impart this, this mm -hmm. information all over the place, we're into networking. And is there any, any kind of a, a certain message that we can give out now to people that, that just may be the first time that they're, that they're seeing you? Like the message I always put out is to love all things. <coughs> but do as you wish. That's the message that I put out that I've gotten since I've been in the UFO stuff. And uh, that's basically, it says, uh, just you know, take responsibility for your actions, mm -hmm. but uh, do whatever you think needs to be done, you know? And if it's to come down on people that are hurting our planet, then we need to come down on them. We need to expose them, not just hope they're gonna go away, because they're not that's gonna correct. go away. So is there any kind of a thing that you can zap us with? Yeah, I like what Teddy Roosevelt said. He said basically what you said, but he sort of covered himself. He said, walk softly, but carry, carry a big stick. stick. Yeah. Um, it, it's okay to love the world and love everybody you meet, um, 
but for instance, in, in my and situation, to everything that right. means a plant, that means the earth. Absolutely. Uh, there are intelligent people out there who, unfortunately, don't think that way. Okay. And if you let your guard down and give them unconditional love, they're going to smack you upside the head with a two by four. So there, there has to be a maturity and a responsibility in everything that we do. Um, what I would say to everyone, if this is the first time they've ever heard me, is don't believe a word I'm saying or anyone else is saying. Um, my message, I guess, to everyone, and it's what I try to put across in my book, in all my lectures, everything that I do, is that um, you got to lose, learn to use your own brain, uh, learn to do your own research, don't follow anyone blindly, and for God's sake, never worship a leader. Right. Uh, and that's the only way you can find your own truth. And that's the only thing in this world that counts, is your own truth. But it's got to be the truth. You can't fool yourself, and you can't let other people fool you. Uh, what most people believe is reality. I have found, through my stint with, with Naval Intelligence and through the last 19 years of research, um, is really a ride on Mr. Toad's car in, the, in Disneyland. And I've got to, the message that I want to give everybody is your e-ticket's just expired. And if you've never been to Disneyland don't know what an e-ticket is, that was the ticket you could buy at the gate that you could ride all the rides you wanted to as long as you wanted to and, and you never had to pay anything or, or do anything other than have that e-ticket. Mm -hmm. Well, the ride's over. There's some people in this world who are about to destroy the sovereignty of nations, take away our Bill of Rights. I believe you. The UFO thing is integrally tied into this in some way. I'm not exactly sure how. But if extraterrestrials are real, then they're controlling everything, believe me. If they're not real, they're being used uh, as, a, as, a, as a threat from without to scare people into coming into this one world global unity of humanity in order to face that external threat. But in the process, we're going to lose. Uh, the, the ordinary man will lose. Mm -hmm. A lot, in fact. But my search is for the truth. And I would like for everybody to start looking for the truth instead of dialing Channel 6, listening right. to uh, President Bush or Walter mm -hmm. Cronkite or anybody else, uh, and believing them blindly. Because it's, it's most people are pretty lazy, more or less. Yeah. You know, they just like to watch the television. They don't even buy the paper anymore. And the paper is you can hardly believe what you can read in the paper. But a lot of people aren't even reading the paper. And forget cable, which cable I think is one who might might be the salvation of the planet if we can just get cable to everybody and we can put good shows on, such as our show. But we are about the truth. That's I have a show. The whole show is called the Shane Eden Show with Lou mm -hmm. Golden. And in, within that framework, we do the UFO connection mm -hmm. about 50% of the time. And the rest of the time, and the motto of our show is the truth. We want the truth. That's all we want. I don't care if it's for us or for you or whatever. Just the truth. And the only way to get that is to dig at it and ask questions and research. And that's why that's I, I feel you know flattered. And I'm, I'm glad that uh, we have this chance to talk to you, too, because I personally, you know, think that you're out there putting this stuff out, you know, because uh, uh, unless you're some kind of sadomasochist or something <laughs> that, that loves all this, you know, well, you make that reaction <laughs> because you get a bunch of it, you know, but uh, it, a lot of it rings true, such as the landing on the moon mm -hmm. prior to that, you know, such as this huge, huge ship coming out of the water. For how long was that, 45 minutes you watched No, we it? watched it for about 10 minutes, took a lot of photographs. Uh -huh. well, the chief quartermaster there are actually photographs took photographs floating around. Yeah. Well, the government has them. Yeah, right. I don't know if we'll ever see them, but it certainly left uh, an impression on me. I know that uh, UFOs are real, that they're, uh, they're metal, they're a machine, and somebody's flying in those things. The only question is who? Did somebody on Earth invent a secret technology that's been withheld from the public for many, many years? Mm -hmm. Are they using this, flying around, to, to create an artificial alien threat from outer space to help bring about this one world government? Are our extraterrestrials really visiting us here on the Earth? And we need to know this. We need to get at the truth. We don't want to be manipulated. And if extraterrestrials are real, it's the most significant event that's ever occurred in the history of mankind, mm -hmm. and especially that we recognize it, mm -hmm. and that we're not looking at them as gods. Uh, it's important that we know this and that we deal with it 